I, th I believe it was like me and Kanye and we were just taking selfies. This is my new friend, Alia. She's a writer. Ever since I was a kid, people were telling me, you're good at this. I grew up in Texas. I'm a Pisces. Alia may seem chatty and jovial right now, but she wasn't three hours ago. Today we are reading from the Book of Mental Health. Three hours ago, Alia was sitting alone under a tree and feeling like shit. And so she messaged me, even though I had only met her once, like on the street. We took pictures that day and parted ways. Now she was in my inbox asking for help. It has been a crazy past few weeks, months of just being so stressed about my path. It's such a pivotal time. I feel like this is the start of the rest of my life, which sounds insane to say, and I don't think it's true, but I can't help but feel that way. I think I'm afraid of making the wrong choice. Have you ever seen that movie, Sliding Doors, with Gwyneth Paltrow? As a movie, it's average, but the message in it is sublime. Have you ever wondered what might have been? Basically, it's about a woman who gets fired from work one day. So I'm out. And so she heads back home devastated. Well, this is just perfect. Not realizing that she's about to catch her husband cheating on her. Bossy, useless, boss. But as she gets to her train, the doors are about to close. So she runs to catch it. And it's like, will she make it or won't she? Will she catch her husband cheating on her? No! Or will he manage to get his mistress out in the nick of time? I had just caught that train. The whole movie is based on showing you what happens in both scenarios. The first half of the movie shows you how her life turns out if she misses a train. The second half shows you what happens if she catches it on time. Sliding doors. But the stunning thing about both versions is how even though all the events are radically different in the short term, in the long term, all the important beats of her life's destiny happen pretty much the same. I think that's what happens in real life also. All those little decisions you're worrying about now, they are what ultimately shapes your future. What does? It's how you carry yourself in the world. You could try to make all the decisions you want with a whiteboard. You could write out a list of pros and cons or whatever, but all that's gonna do is calm your logical brain. It's never gonna satisfy your soul. If you wanna know how to decide what to do next, if you never wanna make a wrong decision, then always follow the energy. And the energy is whatever feels right, but that also feels scary. Listen to that voice, the artistic voice, and you'll be just fine. All of my friends studied science, engineering, business. I've never really been around other like artist people. I feel like I'm constantly behind and it feels like everyone around me does have everything figured out. Especially at this age, there's so much pressure to be special, to do something like truly amazing. I'm just kind of lagging in discovering who I want to be and what I want to do. There's only two things that are required of you as an artist. No matter what your religion is, no matter what flag you cloak yourself in, no matter what generation you're born into, two, two, two things. things. You have to grow and you have to change. Just like the queen of creativity herself, Mother Nature. That's why we feel so connected when we're beside her. And it's also why every time you stop growing, every time you fight change, you will start hating the world around you. And then you'll start hating yourself. It's because you're refusing the call to adventure. You're going counter to how an artist is supposed to live. It's only when you come to this conclusion through trauma or peacefully on your own that you finally start living. It's only then that you become an artist, not one second before.